I felt the need to uh, put this video out um, after our last one, which alluded to the elephant in the room, that this is the story of the elephant in the room. But after we released that video, under very difficult circumstances, we had the most horrendous, hideous, nasty comments by very, very brave people who hide behind a channel with no content on you're that brave to stand that, you know. And this is nothing new. I know all YouTubers get it. But this one particularly hurt. And if you stick with the video, you'll probably understand why. It's nothing to do with narrowboating. Although it is videoed on the back of a narrowboat. But if you don't want to watch it, don't want to watch it. If you want to be a sad, well I can't say, and be make nasty comments you're just wasting electricity because they go straight in the bin anyway it's up to you if you watch it good morning Hello. this video is to actually talk about the elephant in the room uh, I don't know when it will go out and in what sequence well nothing I'm I don't, I don't, listening to you. I, I don't know what order it will go out uh in relation to this cruise but it's not a, a woe is us sympathy vote it's just an explanation as to oh ethel's gone ethel's behaving they can't herself see. they I can't know. see ethel's lying down ethel's behaving herself well, carry on. anyway we've come out for a couple of days just to see how we get on with the boat um so far you wanted to see if you could still handle it, if you still hack it, basically, didn't you? Yeah. You've been great. Um, You're still annoying, but other than that, you, you've been brilliant. Some time ago, and we're talking a few years ago, we realised that there was something not quite right with me. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that aside, something wasn't quite right, and I kept going to the doctors. Ethel. Ethel. And he did the good old classic, you want some counselling, some antidepressants. And I was stupid enough to go along with him for a while. And then... Not um, the counselling, just the antidepressants oh, no. that made you ill. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, then lockdown happened. Now we're talking, it's, it's now April 2021. This started... This recent bout with the doctor started at the end of 2019. Um, I last saw him in March 2020. And then we went yeah. locked. And then, then, then doctors wrapped themselves all up in cotton wool and plastic bags and God knows what else and re started refusing to see people. So the last thing he said to me, because my foot was shaking, was what's going on there? And I said, I was rather hoping you'd tell me that. So he upped my antidepressants. I was going to say, what you, <laughs> antidepressants, obviously it was, uh, it was depression, wasn't it? Of course, of course it was, yeah, yeah. and anxiety. Uh, and I've not seen him since. So I consulted Dr. Goodle. Go Goodle? Google. Google, yeah. Which doctors hate. But I can tell you what they hate even more is when you get it right. Because my doctor's not spoken to me t for over a year. You have missed out that they actually even got you... Um, a mental health nurse uh, that rang up. I had a discussion on the telephone with my doc. Well, actually, he sent me a text message. He sent me a text message. That's that's another story that we may go into at some point. And following that, I, I, I rang up and I said, this is not psychological, it's neurological. And the same afternoon, I had a phone call off a mental health nurse, <laughs> which didn't end well. Well, no, she, she, she understood. She, she understood. She, she, she could agreed understand. that the she doctors could, were She couldn't understand mad. why. She thought they needed medication. Well, GP. <laughs> so anyway, doctors are very precious, delicate things, and they're, they're not allowed to mix with us common folk. So I've not seen a GP for over a year. But we knew something was not quite right. And we... we I could tell you a story about the Nuffield, but I... Yeah, yeah. We basically we've been begging the doctors to give him a referral so we for a, a referral neurologist. for a neurologist 
so we could then just go private. We had no intention of letting the NHS play. We just wanted them just to give us... <laughs> well, first of all... <laughs> right. Do it. Go on. I, I act out my dreams, and before you all get excited, they're, all, they're violent ones, and we've got loads of video of me attacking the dog, biting Tom, me, and it all sounds me, quite, it me. It all sounds quite funny, but it's one of the very, very early signs of Parkinson's. Google it. And I kept on telling my doctor, and I eventually got referred to a sleep clinic. Which was a miracle in disguise, even though it, it well, was for sleep apnea, which you don't it, have. Yeah, <laughs> but he picked up, he said, you've got RBD sleep behaviour disorder, which means rapid eye movement, you know, that's when you're dreaming. And you, most people think, oh, I do that. No, trust me, you don't. You might think you're dreaming that you think that you're doing it, but I actually physically punch people. I've, and we've had to make the bedroom like a padded cell. So that was a, a first step, except that after the phone consultation, the, the, the sleep specialist went off sick for two months and didn't send his report in. So that delayed us by two months. Hang on a minute, some cyclists coming. Idiot. Hang on. And all we needed, we didn't even need the... Um, all we wanted was just the referral. Nothing else, just a referral. Eventually, what happened was, <laughs> Dr Thomas, when I spoke to him on the phone, the sleep specialist, he was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And I thought, oh my goodness. And he said, you do have RBD sleep behaviour disorder. You need to see a neurologist. And I'm sitting patiently, and I kept ringing up and saying, he's prescribed some medication to stop me from kicking shit out of Tom at night. Well, you, we haven't got the letter. So, eventually, when I spoke to the hospital, I got what can only be described as gibberish. Because what he'd done is he'd, he'd used a dictaphone. I know, I used my finger. It, and it had automatically generated a letter. No which was gibberish no and checked. no human being. Right, I want to show you something. This is a 60 inch neck. I know. 60 I inches. I put weight on during lockdown, <laughs> but come on. 60 inch neck, which is how big about? Well, the one know. line that really confused us was Rhys, who we presume is some f Welsh fella, urged. And we thought, who the hell's Rhys in this scenario? And who's he urged? <laughs> he meant researched. <laughs> And this letter was full of stuff like that. But anyway, I complained and got it translated into English. Damn. Meanwhile, all the time's ticking by. And I kept saying to me, oh, so, sorry, yeah. 12th of January, I was referred to the NHS to see a neurologist. I got a letter saying, if you've not had an appointment by the 26th of January, give us a ring. So I rang them on the 27th of January and they said, we're not giving appointments out. Do you not know there's a crisis going on? Well, well the less said about that, yeah. the better. So we're now in the middle of April and I still haven't had a, a, an appointment to see a neurologist <laughs> for the NHS. But in the meantime... We've been told it could be two years, though, John. We, we, uh, we, we, we tried to find someone private and that's not easy. I mean, we got a referral because they won't see it. it doesn't matter how much money that's, you throw that's the at thing. them. All that messing about, we didn't really care about the NHS. We just wanted them to just give us a referral. As soon as you got a referral, can go private. Job done. Took Ish. ages, didn't it? Anyway, the Tom tracked some, somebody down quite close to where we live, and we thought, oh, in for a penny. Well, in for a, a hundred and eighty quid, <laughs> in for a pound. And we went to see. Well, a couple of months ago now. At the time, time of recording, it's two, yeah. two, two and a half anyway, months ago. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And he, he said, you got the early stages of Parkinson's, which didn't come as a surprise to me. Uh, and my GP still hasn't acknowledged it. So where we're at now... But can I just say, do you know yeah. why he hasn't acknowledged it? Yeah, I because got, I got still, it right. Yeah, but they still haven't physically seen him. No. I mean, I had a bit of a to I do mean, with him. I won't even get into why. I just went to go and pick up a, a sample bottle and it all went wrong. But one of the reasons is they don't think there's anything wrong with him because they've I'm, not seen I'm him. I'm sure the viewer <laughs> must have noticed, certainly from our last video, the you shoes. know, yeah. if, if you think this is bad, you want to see me try and use a computer. 
and I've had to tell the DVLA and I've, I've, I'm being given a medical review licence because the new... See, the thing is with Parkinson's, it's a resting tremor. So when you're doing something... When you're driving, you're fine. And when you're on the it, boat, you It stops fine. and you probably notice me on the tiller. It's not as bad. Yeah, but when I'm not doing anything, this, this is going every second I'm awake. So he gave me some medication about 10 weeks ago. Uh, it, 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 it hasn't really worked. We'll tell, we'll tell, can we? So I saw him two days before we came out on this trip. And he's, where we're at now is he's told me to stop taking that medication and after three or four days, which we're at now, see if there's any difference at all. Because he said very often, you, you may not think it's made an improvement, but you notice if you stop taking it. So that's where we're at now. I don't think it's done anything you, particularly. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, but you do all right for some with Parkinson's. I mean, I even yeah, let him cut my hair. It's and exhausting, it, it's fine. I mean, it's a bit like this, but you do it, don't you? You yeah, can but do it, things. But it's exhausting. I know, but it's good that you can still do So things. the next course is stronger medication three times a day. Now, because he works privately, he only does five hours a week private work. The rest of the time he works for the NHS. So it won't be till next week that I get the prescription for the new medication. But when we saw him the other day, I was quite taken aback when he said I would be a good candidate for surgery. Brain surgery. <laughs> Brain surgery. Yeah, that's uh, that kind of took me back a bit. And apparently it, it's quite successful. It's a bit like a pacemaker for the brain. They, they, they put electrodes. It sounds, it sounds very science fiction. It would be deep for inside most your people, brain. That would be a bit of an issue having an operation. But for you, it's going to be a huge issue. I'm not. Well, I'm not bothered because I can't carry on like this. Mm, so apparently they put electrodes right down into the middle of your brain, and then they run a cable under the skin oh down here, God. and then they slit you open there and put in the, the brains of the operation. And, and they literally attach it to a laptop and program it. So, so that's where we're at. We're, we're hoping it doesn't come to that. But the one thing it won't take away, hopefully, is our wicked, sometimes awful bad taste sense of humour. Yeah. We're, not, we're not taking this too seriously, but the idea of this trip out was to see can we still handle the boat? Yeah, can we? I, I've nearly fallen off a few times. I caught you. Well, actually, I didn't really catch you. I kind of dragged you away from falling into a lock, which was a bit of a worry because I thought he's now going to fall down a hill, but a lock or a hill. It's getting busy. It's getting busy. Which is a beautiful day on Saturday. Saturday. So we just thought we'd do the, the elephant in the room and let the elephant out of the room. You might not be interested. I wouldn't be. But we're not after sympathy, please. We'll see you later. <laughs>